Hello and welcome to the 2012 San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. My name is Skip Burris and I'm here with Bill Gratishar and Hope Rugo. Uh, we'd like to talk to you a little bit about the presentations that were made today, Thursday, here at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. Bill, there was an update on the Calor trial, a study that looked at uh, the role of treatment in patients that had had local regional recurrences. Your thoughts on that study and the impact it might have on practice? Sure. So this is an important study because we've always had this question when patients develop a local recurrence, you resect it, the patient's rendered essentially NED again what's the impact of additional therapy? And we've always had this concern, of course, that these are patients, that's like a harbinger of something bad that's going to happen down the line. But the issue is whether by administering additional therapy you really impact on outcome. And the CLOR study looked at, um, you know, a couple hundred patients, uh, about half control, half got treatment that was at the um, uh, discretion of the investigator. And what they essentially found is that the outcome of patients who got treated with chemotherapy uh, ended up being better than those that did not get any additional therapy. And I suppose there's some caveats. I mean, some of these recurrences were hormone-sensitive recurrences, so it would have been, you know, in my mind, perfectly reasonable using clinical judgment to consider endocrine therapy as opposed to chemotherapy. But I think the fundamental message is that with a patient who has a local regional recurrence, that it's reasonable to offer additional therapy and what kind of therapy that is, you know, I think is still open to discussion. In fact, they did find that um, in the ER positive group, the benefit of chemotherapy was less as you would expect. Uh, but I, I think it's incredibly important uh, data because uh, prior to this, we really didn't have the data to say what we should do. And I think mostly we gave chemo because if you have triple negative breast cancer and a local regional recurrence, you know, you thought, well, you know, the jig is up, so I better give chemo now. And uh, this gives us validation, which is great. Ben, you know, I think we're just going to use our standard treatment. We always are. I find that this is a difficult situation when you have a patient who got anthracycline and taxane therapy, then has a local regional recurrence a few years later, which is completely resected, what chemo are you going to give that patient? And right. that, we really have no idea what to do with, whether you give them a platinum or something. I don't know. Absolutely. It's interesting to see the results come to light in GI malignancies and colon cancer in particular. Resected liver metastases have, have long been treated with chemotherapy in the follow-up setting, and there's been um, some interesting neoadjuvant work even in that population, and I think it's been a little bit more of a mystery in breast cancer. Hasn't seemed as clear-cut as the liver mets in that setting, but certainly an important trial. Hope you mentioned triple negative breast cancer. A couple studies that talked about the, the role of chemotherapy in that setting, one discussing the very young patient and, and their responses, and then also some updates on the effect of profiling in triple negative patients. Yeah, there were two interesting presentations. The first one looking at our very young patients, which obviously represents a minority of the patients we treat, but at uh, many uh, large centers, you know, it does seem like everybody's young who has uh, breast cancer. Turns out, which is, we already knew, is that you know, younger women do tend to get more proliferative disease and have a higher uh, presence of triple negative disease, so ER negative, and uh, I think HER2 positive disease is seen in some of those patients. I don't think we have very good data on how many, but uh, what they showed was that the, they were looking at neoadjuvant therapy, and they saw that, wow, you know, the pathologic complete response rate in our young patients seems to be really good. And it it really is driven by the fact that they saw more highly proliferative and triple negative disease, and those patients had a higher rate of pathologic CR. So I think, you know, we can cure uh, some of these patients with what starts out being really bad looking disease. So uh, it's really an argument for maintaining aggression in the treatment of these patients. You know, I do see some people uh, leaving out anthracyclines, et cetera, and I just don't think we have the data yet uh, to change aggressive treatment approach in patients with triple negative disease, young patients in particular. And then, go ahead. I was going to say, Bill, any, your, any thoughts there in terms of how you do you noticeably treat those patients differently, more aggressively, based on age? or No, I mean, if there was any inclination to withhold therapy or if you had an option of a standard uh, program that was less intensive than more, I would use the more intensive program because we've known for years that patients with clinic, uh, younger patients, particularly the very youngest patients, and then on top of it, those with triple negative disease, uh, have a bad prognosis. So I wouldn't short them on any form of therapy. 
But it does encourage us that these patients can be very res have disease very responsive to chemotherapy. Yeah. And you know, I really feel like neoadjuvant approach is uh, so much better for some of these patients because you know you get an idea of what you're doing as opposed to treating in the dark, and then you can pursue other clinical trial options in patients who don't have a great response. And we still don't know really how to improve outcome for those patients. And follow that thought with the, with profiling those patients. Or are you, you know there was a study presented talking about the results of profiling triple negative patients, but do you standardly do that in your practice? No, I mean, we don't, and I don't think that there's the data to suggest that we should be doing that. I know that everybody has a slightly different approach to it, but uh, primarily I think the profiling that can be obtained for uh, cost, you know, as a sort of clinical tool is done primarily in advanced disease. And, you know, you can find tar targetable mutations, so to speak, but we just have absolutely no idea where, whether it matters to target those mutations. I mean, a good example is, you know, PI3 kinase, where, you know, you see it in the majority, but doesn't seem to predict anything really, and uh, except for maybe better or worse outcome depending on the group you look at. Uh, in this uh, very interesting presentation by Balco, they looked at uh, profiling patients who had residual disease after neoadjuvant chemotherapy, uh, specifically those with triple negative breast cancer where we feel the most anxious about their outcome. And they did find quite a number of targetable mutations. So the, the sort of lesson, the take home message from that uh, study is that if you do this kind of work in the setting of a clinical trial, and we should be doing it, that then we should be designing clinical trials that specifically uh, address the mutations we're finding, and potentially over time we can be smarter, because it's my belief that it's not a single mutation that's going to determine response, that it's a panel of mutations, and we're going to need these huge supercomputers and really smart computer scientists to figure out what genes, what gene panel, what signature we need. Yeah, the tumor heterogeneity is overwhelming. Do you need any other and, and to complement that, we're going to need a stable of drugs that are available for each one of these sort of things so that when we identify, <laughs> you know, what the mutations are that are driving a particular tumor that we have, you know, something that we can utilize to target it. So it's, it's not a minor undertaking. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. And uh, again, we'll uh, be back with you and more data from tomorrow's San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. Thank you.